welcome to The Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. In this series of The Green Building Show, we've been putting passive design under the spotlight. We've been speaking to architect Oliver Steele and research director at the Institute for Sustainable Futures, Caitlin McGee, to get their insights into passive design principles. In this episode, we'll be looking at thermal mass, its benefits and what it means. So what is thermal mass? Thermal mass is the ability of a building material to absorb and store heat energy. Thermal mass is one of the most difficult concepts to explain simply, but I'll, I'll have a go. Um, thermal mass is basically about the ability of a construction material to store, um, to store heat. So to absorb heat, to store it, and then to release it later on. So it's almost like the best analogy is like a battery, really. Some construction materials work a bit like a battery in storing heat um, and then releasing it later on. And they tend to be the heavyweight materials. So, and this is a rule of thumb, but the lightweight materials tend to have low thermal mass. The heavyweight materials tend to have high thermal mass. Materials with high thermal mass actually work in that way like a battery to store heat. Now that can be really beneficial when you've got um, you know, quite a hot day and you want to store the heat. It's winter for example but it's quite a sunny day. You want to store that heat, um, allow a concrete slab for example to absorb that heat and then later on in the evening when you really need the heat the slab will slowly start to kind of release it. So examples of materials with high thermal mass are concrete slabs or kind of masonry walls, for example. Um, in temperate climates, it's useful to have a bit of thermal mass um, in the home. Um, usually a combination is good, a combination of lightweight um, and thermal mass. And as a rule of thumb, I suppose in humid climates, it's really the lightweight um, material that you want um, because thermal mass is, is very tricky. It's actually a real benefit if you have it in the right place but if you have it in the wrong place, it can actually be like a thermal liability. So, you know, because it's basically like you're having some material that's storing and then re-releasing heat. So you've got to make sure that it's doing it in a way that you want it to, rather than, um, for example, on a, on a hot summer's day, storing heat all day and then releasing it at night so that you, you know, can't sleep. <laughs> you don't, you want to avoid that. So essentially thermal mass should be kind of exposed to sun on a winter's day, for example, but on a summer's day, it should be completely shaded so that it doesn't actually um, absorb the heat and then release it later. Thermal mass, I think, is best described by an example. So when you watch the weather report in Sydney in the evening, and you'll see that in the city, there might be a, a high of 24 and a low of 16. And then in Penrith, there'll be a high of 28 and a low of 12. You think, well, they're only you know, 20, 20 k's apart. What, what's the difference? Why is there such a, a, a great difference in the highs and lows? And Penrith is going so much higher and lower than the middle of Sydney. Well, what's happening is that the harbour and the ocean are acting as a thermal mass. So when you get <clears throat> the sun's rays beating down and heating things up, then a lot of that will be, the excess heat will be absorbed into the harbour because it's this big body of water which can suck up that excess heat. And then when the sun goes away, uh, night falls, it cools down, then the heat re-radiates out of the harbour into the atmosphere around the city and that keeps the high down and the low up. Whereas in, in Western Sydney where you, you're not so close to the harbour, there's not that counteraction of the sun's rays during the daytime so that the high will be higher and then when the sun sets and night falls it gets cooler there's there's not the harbour re-radiating that heat back out so the low will drop further and then when you go out to the desert you get really hot days and really cold nights and that's because there's no thermal mass of an ocean moderating that um, moderating the heat and the same principle applies in a house so if you have a house that's designed just as a say an uninsulated weatherboard box like the one I grew up in in Birch Grove where it's the same temperature inside as outside on a you know six degree morning um, then <coughs> there's 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 no there's no mass for the for the solar gain to collect in so if you have if you have an uninsulated um, lightweight structure and you 
have the advantage of winter sun penetrating, warming the space up, as soon as that sun sets, the, the heat will escape. There's nowhere for it to stay. There's nowhere for it to be stored. So what you want is some, um, some heavy building materials in there, which, which will then heat up um, during the day. And then when the sun goes away and it cools down, heat always goes from the warmest object to the coolest object, which is lucky for us because that's why the, the sun heats us up. Um, and so if you, you imagine a warm brick sitting, in, sitting on your dining table uh, on a cold night and you, know, you touch it, that's actually going to be radiating, acting like a little radiator and radiating that heat back out to you because you're a cooler object than the brick is. Concrete and bricks need a lot of heat to change their temperature. They are considered to have high thermal mass. Lightweight materials such as timber, Skyon matrix cladding and Stria cladding have a low thermal mass. By using the product with the right thermal mass in the right environment, you can make a massive difference to heating and cooling bills and to the comfort of the people living in the home. Thermal mass stores the solar energy it collects in the day and then re-radiates it at night. In Sydney, it makes sense to have some thermal mass in the house because we have warm days and cold nights in winter. So during the day, the sun can be allowed into the house to warm up the structure and then at night it will re-radiate that warmth back into the room, re reducing the, the reliance on heating. Whereas up in far north Queensland, where there's, there's not much diurnal variation, so there's not much daily temperature variation, you're really relying on, on breeze and air movement there to, um, to, to cool you down. So you actually don't want to build thermal mass in because that's just going to heat up and stay hot in summer. So really you want a lightweight, in, well insulated building in that sort of tropical climate with plenty of access for breeze and cross flow. Um, and then in in Victoria, uh, the colder parts of, of the country, you really want to focus on getting that thermal mass in and having good solar orientation, having everything well sealed so you can suck the sun's warmth in when you want it and then seal it in and, and keep it as long as you can. We got Oliver to explain insulating with thermal mass. Really what you want with a thermal mass is to have that insulated from the outside. So. Uh, you might have something like a reverse brick veneer. So everyone, everyone's familiar with a, with a brick veneer house where you have the timber frame on the inside and then the brick on the outside. That works well for durability because the brick is copying the weathering and it does that very well. But from an environmental point of view, from a, a sustainability and energy point of view, reverse brick veneer is better. So then you've got the brick on the inside, which is your thermal mass, which is um, acting as your, your heat sink and your radiator inside the house and then outside that you've got a lightweight insulated skin which is isolating that thermal mass from the outside so that you get the benefit of that inside the building. Uh, so then you might use a timber frame with, um, with bats between the studs or you might have a foam continuous um, insulation wrapping right around it. Uh, you might use weatherboards or sheet cladding um, but essentially you want a um, with lightweight lightweight construction you want a good durable external skin over an insulated timber frame or in insulated frame of timber or metal whatever over material you use in summer with your thermal mass by keeping it shaded all day as it's as it's heating up outside any excess heat that works its way in should be absorbed by that thermal mass. So if you've got a nice cold lump of concrete as your floor uh, and it starts to, to reach 30, 35 degrees outside, even if you've got good shading, some of that heat's going to work its way in, then that, that concrete slab is going to suck the excess heat out of the room and keep you nice and cool. And then at night, when things cool down a bit outside, what you want to do is night flushing, which is where you open your doors and windows, or these days you can have them automated so that they open if you've got the right setup. And that will then bring the cooler breeze through and that excess heat that has, that has been stored in, in the thermal mass will then radiate out and be sucked out 
by the breeze and then set back to a nice cold thermal mass for the next day. So that's how you can really manage that um, daily um, uh, that daily rhythm of, of highs and lows to offset it with a thermal mass, whether it be summer or winter. So how can thermal mass be used poorly? Poor use of thermal mass <clears throat> is where you don't have the thermal mass positioned correctly or insulated correctly. So for example, uh, a brick veneer house that has the thermal mass on the outside uh, and then an insulated frame inside and then maybe a lightweight floor and lightweight roof isn't getting the benefit of that thermal mass. They are getting the benefit of the, the durability and the security of a brick external skin, but they're not getting the benefit of, of the uh, thermal mass from a passive design point of view. Uh, another thing to watch out for with thermal mass is heat bridging. So if you have, uh, if you're relying on um, a thermal mass concrete slab, for example, and then that slab carries outside to become a balcony, then that's going to be a, um, a, a path for the heat that you're, that your valuable heat that you're capturing and storing in winter to then get sucked out onto the, onto the balcony when it gets cold outside, or for heat to creep in in summer through the, um, uh, through the slab that's extending out onto the balcony. So putting in uh, thermal, um, thermal breaks or insulating the edge of a thermal mass or insulating the perimeter of a thermal mass is very important. So I'll give you two scenarios, the, the hot scenario and the cold scenario. So thermal mass can actually add to unwanted heat. Um, say if you have um, exposed thermal mass um, collecting heat during a summer's day because you haven't shaded it, um, it absorbs it and then it releases it at night and makes um, uh, your rooms even hotter um, and you know potentially that sort of rises up into your bedrooms and you can't sleep so um, that's an example of poor use of thermal mass it can lead to overheating on summer nights um, another example that's kind of the opposite is um, if you um, have too much thermal mass um, and you're actually it's not exposed to sun and it's winter um, you turn on the heater but any heat from that room will just get absorbed straight into the slab rather than you kind of feeling it straight away and that might not be the outcome you want so um, I mean you've probably kind of had the experience where you've been into a house that's built of very kind of bulky materials but it doesn't get good sunlight and it just feels cold all the time um, so that would be an example of you know too much thermal mass that's not doesn't have adequate exposure to um, sunlight um, I mean, all, if you're in a very cold climate where you do need heating, um, some kind of thermal mass near the heater source is, is beneficial because it can store some of that heat and keep the room warm for a long period of time. But you just want to make sure you don't have too much thermal mass that either makes a home cold or you have too th much thermal mass that's exposed to sun in summer and makes a, a home hot. So it's really about kind of moderating it and understanding how it works. Um, you know, understanding that battery analogy for your benefit. In the next episode of The Green Building Show, we'll be looking at the cost of passively designing your home, the effect it can have on the value, and the benefits for the homeowner and the environment.